Hey guys, it's Brittany with Scott Livery Marketing. Today, I just wanted to go over how you can access and use our templates right from our SLM website. The editing process is going to be the same for all of our templates available on our site. However, today I'm going to be going over how you guys can edit the email signature template and then get that added to your Gmail email. As you can see, I already have our website pulled up, which is scottleroymarketing.com. Again, that's scottleroymarketing.com. And then I also have another tab open, which is my Gmail email. In order for you to access any of our templates on our website, you will need to be logged into a Gmail email on the same browser. That's actually what is going to give you that editability access to all of our templates. So you do want to make sure that you're logged into a Gmail email. And then this is also the account that I'm going to be adding the email signature to. Once you guys have both of those tabs pulled up, we're gonna start on our SLM website. And I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. And you're gonna see our toolbar. We're gonna go ahead and hover over KW Resources. And then we're going to click right on the word templates, which is the last option. Once this page loads, you guys should see templates front and center. If you guys are getting a prompt to enter a password, it's just asking for your market center number. That is going to be a two to four digit code which is just your market center number. And once you add that in, it will allow you access to this page. Once you guys have done that, you're just gonna scroll down a little bit and you're going to see our templates are nestled right underneath our how-to video. And you guys have so many options here. So you guys have access to flyers, buyers prospecting, fall season, for sale um, flyers, ignite flyers, holiday pieces. These are all available to you and they're all Google Docs. So you have access to edit every single one of them that are available. I'm gonna scroll back towards the top in order to access email signatures. You'll see email signatures are in the second column. They're about the ninth one down. And we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Once you guys have opened email signatures, you should see four separate folders. These are just the folders that are going to house the actual templates available to you. And I'm just gonna start by clicking on each one just to show you guys what your options are. Starting with modern email signatures, if I double click on that folder, it's going to pull up all of our modern email signature templates. And these are all just aesthetically different. Going back into email signatures, I'll go ahead and double click normal email signatures. And you'll see there, they're just aesthetically different from the last ones. Most of these are going to be square as well. And then our vertical ones. And if you guys ever want to preview one, if you double click it, it will open that up in a separate tab for you and then you'll be able to see what it looks like. So it almost looks like a vertical business card, very, very standard. And then I can X out of that, it will bring me right back here. And then I'm just gonna click back once more and look at widescreen. And they may take a second to load, so don't panic. <clears throat> There we go. And these are all of our widescreen email signatures. So whichever email signature is the one that you want to go ahead and edit, you can select that one accordingly. I'm gonna select one out of normal email signatures. And I'm just gonna go with 001, which is the first option. 
all you're going to do is double click that email signature and it's going to open that up for you right in a separate tab. And it may take a second to load. Once that loads, you're able to see the preview and essentially the information that you'll be able to add to this. You can also customize this. But you'll notice that view only is populating. As of right now, this specific template, you don't have access to edit that. In order to get that editability, you need to go ahead and click on File in the top left-hand corner. And then we're going to click on or hover over Make a Copy. From here, you're going to see two options. You can either make a copy of the entire presentation or selected slides. Selected slides, that's only going to give you access to this image that you're looking at right now, so everything right here. By selecting entire presentation, it's also going to move over the instructions, the written out instructions on how to make edits to this email signature. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on entire presentation just so we have a copy of everything. Once you guys have clicked that, you're going to get this pop-up. It's just allowing you to name this email signature. This is what it's going to be called on your Google Drive, so you can name it whatever you'd like, so it's easier for you to find later. I'm just gonna label it my name, email sig. Once you guys have that name added, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. That way it will automatically drop it right in our Google Drive. Once you guys click OK, another tab will automatically open. And this is now the file that you have access to edit. You'll notice the name of it changed. It's now titled whatever you just titled it as. You'll notice view only is gone and we're right on our Google Drive. This is my email. Once you guys have this populating, we can go ahead and start editing. So the first thing I'm going to edit is the name. If I just click where that name is, you're going to see that a cursor will appear and you now have access to edit that text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type my name in. Underneath that, we have our contact information. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing and just start typing in my information. Do our phone number first. And then our email. And then our website. And I'm just gonna stretch this out a little bit just so I can fit everything. And you'll see here, my text is very congested because my email is very long and so is our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the text and you guys can either do the entire text box or just the certain text that maybe is overlapping. So I'm just gonna select the text that's overlapping and I'm gonna shrink that down. So right now it's 30, it's size 30 font. I'm just gonna drop that down to 18. Perfect. And since it's just the M, I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit just so everything fits. And you guys have access to adjust that as well. Drag that back up. You guys can also adjust the text if you guys wanna change what text it is. You can change that. You can change the alignment of the text if maybe you want it to be centered. You can center everything. You guys have access to make any edits you'd like here. All of our email signatures will have the each office is independently owned and operated because that is the standard Keller Williams text. You guys can remove that. However, it will be on everything and it's just for compliance. For the logos and your headshot, if you don't have a headshot yet, you can always just delete this image. However, I'm going to show you guys how to replace it with another image. Same thing with the logo. So for the logo, I'm gonna start with that. 
in order for me to get a new logo in here, I can do one of two things. I can replace it with an image or I can just add in a new image. So for the logo, I'm going to add in a new image. That way you guys can see both variations. So I have nothing selected right now and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on insert. Once you guys have clicked on that, you're gonna see images right underneath. And when I hover over that, I have a couple of options. My image happens to be on my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on upload from computer. That way it will let me pull it right from my desktop. Once this comes up, this is the logo I'm looking to replace that Keller Williams logo with. So I'm just gonna double click it and it's gonna drop that in for me. Now I can resize that and I can actually go ahead and just remove this one. You can do this either by right clicking and deleting, or if you just hit the delete button, it will also delete that image. And now I can drag my Keller Williams logo right above it. This is great if you guys have a specific logo you need added, whether it's a team logo or if you have another office logo, maybe your office does have a specific logo that they tend to use with their DBA. If that's the case, that's how you can add that in. You could have also done the replace image. The only downside is the, the logo that was previously there was shaped differently. So you would have still had to have adjusted that. And I'm gonna show you exactly what would have happened with our headshot right now. So now for the headshot, what I'm going to do is select my headshot and I'm going to go ahead and click on replace image. Once that pops up, I'm going to click on upload from computer. And then I'm going to select my logo here. You'll see here that this logo is square and the image that I'm replacing it with is a rectangle. So it's going to unfortunately crop some of this logo. So I'm going to show you guys how to correct that. Once I have this selected, I'm just gonna open that up and you'll see here it is distorting that. And we can do that by double clicking the image and then we can adjust it accordingly. You can actually drag that out so it fits the entire image. But now you'll see this image is rather large. So once I've done that, if I click outside of the image, that will stop me from cropping it. And I can go ahead and reselect it and just resize that accordingly and drag and drop that. If you guys don't have a headshot at all and would rather completely remove this image, you can always right click and go ahead and delete that as well. Once you guys have your email signature populating the way that you want it to show up on your email, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to click on file in order to download this image. We're gonna go ahead and click on download and then we're gonna select the PNG option. So file, download, PNG. From here, this is actually going to save it right in my download section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on okay. And once that's done, some of you may have it populating down on the bottom as well if you're using Chrome. But once you guys have downloaded that, we're just gonna go back into our email. So I'm just gonna pull up my email tab and we're gonna go ahead and get this added to our Gmail email. Once you guys have your inbox pulled up, on the top right-hand corner, you guys are going to see a gear icon and we're gonna go ahead and click on that. From there, we're gonna click on see all settings. And once that page loads, you'll notice you're automatically on the general tab, which is thankfully where the email signature is as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and scroll down. And you'll see here, we have our email signatures. I'm gonna create a new one in order to add this image in. And I'm just gonna label this Brittany. And 
And once you guys have a title, we'll click on create. And now we can go ahead and add our image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the image icon. It kind of looks like mountains in a square background. We're gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on upload. That way I can grab the download that we just did of that email signature. Once you guys have clicked that, we're just gonna select a file from our device, which is going to give us access to the file on our computer. And these are the two images that I used earlier, but since I just downloaded that image, it's gonna be right in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then here's my email signature. So once you guys have that selected, we're gonna go ahead and click open. And then you'll see that populating right in your email signature. From here, you guys can click on the email signature and size it accordingly. Small is very tiny, medium, and then most of the time we tend to use large because that seems to come in the clearest without being too overwhelming. Once I have it sized, I'm just gonna adjust my signature defaults to show Brittany. That way it's using the new signature that I just selected and created. And then we still need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're just gonna save changes in order to make sure this applied. Once it brings you back to your inbox, we're gonna go ahead and click on compose just so you can make sure that's populating. And one of the nice things about using the Firefox browser is if you do want to custom size this, if you want it a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, you can actually do that right from within this box. So once you guys have it, say you want it a little bit larger, you can update it here. And then just make sure that you highlight it. You'll see it has a blue overlay. I can now copy this. So I just right clicked and copied. And then I can go right back into my email signature through settings. And then see all settings. And I can actually scroll down to my email signature and paste that in and it will resize it for me. So if you want it just a tiny bit bigger rather than the original size or a tiny bit smaller but don't want to go all the way back down to medium, Firefox will allow you to size it manually in a composed message and then copy and paste it back into your email signature. And then I can just save changes again and that will save my sizing. So once I X out, I can recompose and it's the size that I had just updated it with. And that's how you guys can create email signatures on our website and get them added to your Gmail email.